Well, hello, it's laser disc time. We're sitting around drinking beer and watching laser discs. Finally, it's laser disc time. Where I kick back with the beer, spin a laser disc. Few good men, house party too. A Mrs. Daffy and Turbulence. Highlander 2, X Files, Garth Brooks, and the True Lies. Well, hello, it's laser disc time. Where we sit around drinking beer and watching laser discs. Finally, it's laser disc time. Oh, where I sit down drinking laser discs and watch some beer. Ah, Laser Rod, brought to you by Don Frost here from Quarantine uh, with a special treat for you all. Um, I've been digging through some old uh, hard drives and whatnot when I came across a episode that I had uh, started filming but stopped um, in 2016. So the film in question was the Iger sanction and as you can see here it was a disco vision title um, they're pretty uh, garbage um, as you'll not unfortunately get a chance to see because the footage kept getting uh, copyright strikes and taken down when I first tried to put it up on YouTube so I shelved it and kind of gave up but figured you know might as well cut out the uh, footage stuff and and show you my thoughts on it sans uh, anything from the movie um, another big part of it was I think the s score uh, was the reason why I kept getting taken down. So regardless, I hope you enjoy uh, this not so typical laser rot f um, from five years ago almost. So Donald Frost here for Laser Rot, where I'm reviewing two incredibly special things. One, the Disco Vision title of Clint Eastwood directed. The Iger Sanction. Now this movie uh, is a Disco Vision title, as you can see. And that means one of many things. One, it came in 1978. Two, it's available in Beautiful for three. And finally, you get the dead side. Which is the most exciting part of finding a Disco Vision title. So the Iger Sanction, uh, I'm reviewing with it uh, a Northwest Classic Olympia beer. Let's just zoom in there and look at the can. Good luck! It's the water. That's why it tastes just like water. So the reason why I chose this beer is because Clint himself drinks it with uh, the other character in the film. And I figured, hey, I feel like no one has reviewed uh, Olympia in YouTube form, so I'm going to take it on myself to do it. Let's do this pour real nice, like, oh, can't, it just drips all over the floor. That's okay. That's okay. Oh, man, look at that. That head is soap, man. Oh, smells like it, too. So let's just let this settle and let me talk to you a bit about uh, the movie. It would never be made today, and that is always an enjoyable thing to, to watch. Uh, it was rated R, uh, came out in 1975, I believe, and it was one of the first uh, 20 Disco Vision titles uh, released. Uh, for those who are not aware, Disco Vision was the precursor to Laserdisc, and um, a lot of the uh, early editions of these films are terrible, and this was uh, no exception. Um, Major issues with rot on a few sides. Uh, we had issues with uh, the sound, a lot of sibilance, and you can tell that the CX encoding, something that came along later in the laser disc life, uh, was not present on this. It was it was odd. Um, so it was all analog uh, on the audio and uh, and the video. Um, CAV on uh, five sides of the disc. So you were flipping nonstop, and honestly, you flipped probably, or I flipped rather, every 22-ish um, minutes. It wasn't a very long film, but uh, it did have, uh, it was interactive, let's say that. So I found this movie for uh, a dime uh, at a thrift store, as I tend to do, along with these other two um, that I probably will not do reviews on. Uh, as you can see, the packaging is falling apart. Um, these were the first versions 
of the DiscoVision packaging with the open top, as they called it. They popped it in there. Uh, didn't have any sleeves on any of these. Looks like they used it for storage because there were a bunch of record shards in there. Um, the discs are in pretty bad condition, but it, it played for the most part um, pretty well. So let's talk about Eastwood's uh, direct directorial debut, if you will. Um, it was very well acted and very well directed. Um, the content, however, was uh, absolutely just bizarre. He is a uh, art dealer who, or art collector, who is now a teacher, and he was formerly a hitman. So he was asked to do one more um, sanction, as they call it, and uh, that was the Iger sanction. So uh, you have, it's, it's essentially a James Bond uh, ripoff that was written by uh, an author who uh, didn't really write much else. The movie was optioned and done by Eastwood. Uh, it was scored by John Williams. Uh, one of his first uh, film scores before uh, Jaws, and uh, when he, before he jumped from, or after he jumped from TV to film, so this was uh, one of the first ones. Let's talk about Olympia. It is water. Very sweet. You can taste, it just tastes like watery wheat. And I think the alcohol content is something around the 5% range, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but they came in tall boy size, so you can uh, post up uh, wherever you want to and uh, drink several and not get drunk because it's uh, barely alcohol. It's refreshing as fuck. I will give them that. And there is a reason this beer is still made. Is because it's uh, ingrained in the popular society. It's the uh, old Milwaukee of the West Coast. It's the Schlitz of the West Coast. And it's a go-to cheap beer. There's a six pack of this with five bucks. And they're tall boys. So it's just a crazy good deal. Um, I wouldn't really... Uh, I, I enjoy it. It's good beer. It's cheap and good. And that's about all you can get sometimes. It smells like just cheap beer. I mean, that's pretty much it. It's um, uh, very close to a Bud Light, um, in between a Bud Light and a Budweiser, uh, more of a wheat taste. But uh, it's not as carbonated as some of the cheaper beers I've had in the past. Um, so I would definitely uh, recommend it if you have a chance to try it, especially if you're about to go mountain climbing and kill somebody. So uh, enjoy. So this uh, leads us to the the laser art score of Olympia. I'd give it a um, six and a half out of uh, ten. I think that there is a time and a place for a beer like this, and that time and a place is when you're watching a Disco Vision title. So let's get on to the Disco Vision itself. Um, it's as mentioned before, CAV on. Uh, five sides across uh, three discs and on the final side is the illustrious dead side something that uh, was common in the day instead of you know putting over uh, just a blank recording of the laser disc turtle as you'd see in uh, some other blank sides or supplemental material they would take a botched uh, other side of a movie paste it on the back side of the disc and uh, spray this clear glue on it that comes off incredibly easy. So sit tight, I'm going to uh, let this uh, soak in a little bit of rubbing alcohol while I soak in alcohol and take it off and see what's uh, available on this dead side. All right, so here we go. I'm going to uh, coat this bad boy and we will see what we got here. I'm going to use a uh, high alcohol percentage uh, rubbing alcohol to get this off. Um, and it's just uh, this weird pasty glue stuff. Let that sit, kind of rub it on the spots that uh, are missing. 
So this is probably uh, releasing some type of illegal chemical into the air that was banned in the late 70s. So uh, if I keel over and die, tell my wife hello. So I'll come on there for the gods. Yeah, here's to you, Laserdisc friends. Okay, comes right off. Um, like a goo almost. Um, boy, does it stink. Fucking need a gas mask doing this. Yeah, you can see it right there. How the, the grossness of it all. So yeah, we'll pop this in after I give it a good wash down and see what we got. Future Donovan Frost here. Um, so when I initially tried that side um, all those years ago, um, I realized that I just didn't clean it well enough. So I went another round and got the side to play. Unfortunately, it's still a little anticlimactic. So let's take a look. Another side of the movie. So they just doubled the sides, I guess. I think this is right in the, near the end again. So there you have it. A let down dead side. And I am glad I watched it. I would suggest uh, you checking it out. I know it's on uh, Blu ray for pennies. So uh, check that out. Um, if not, uh, it's on a Laserdisc as well um, as a, this Disco Vision title. Um, wouldn't really recommend it. Uh, very early pan and scan. Uh, a lot of the times uh, it looks like their faces were uh, kind of shrunk down to fit into uh, 4.3 as opposed to being cropped. Um, issues with sound, issues with quality, just your standard uh, problems that kind of came with Disco Vision. Uh, the cool thing about Disco Vision is I was talking to uh, uh, Mitch Vegas about this, I, I made a run upstairs and take a look when I was watching, is this technology uh, came out and was based on something that was designed in the mid-early 70s. And watching it, I would have been amazed to see something like this in uh, 1979, 1978. It would have blown my mind because it matches, while there are some issues, DVD quality. And it's uh, a really cool technology that this was available, you know, 30 years ago. So I salute Mr. Disco Vision, and I salute Clint Eastwood for his uh, coolness factor. You know, we need Clint Eastwood. A little more Olympia up in here. I like the can. The can is really pretty. You know, you see cheap beers. Um, you don't see very ornate cans, but like this has a cool uh, symbol on the front, and it hasn't changed. And I know that uh, the same beer I'm drinking is the one that Clint drank uh, in the movie. So, hats off. Laser Rot, signing out. Uh, one thing that was left out of uh, that archival footage you just saw was the Laser Rot rating. Um, unfortunately, I can't really remember the film too much, um, so I'm going to have to give it a rare null out of 10 score. So if you find it, I, I recommend you watching it. It's uh, definitely a product of the early 70s and uh, enjoyable in that facet. So um, anyway, hope to see you soon. Future Diamond Frost here. I don't work actually.